fabulous people, welcome to Florence, the global icon of beauty and the birthplace of Renaissance. With one of the oldest historic centers, some of the most famous museums in the world and mouthwater in Italian food, there are so many ways to explore and experience this iconic city. As someone who has been living in Italy for over a decade, today I will share with you how to see Florence in one day. Everything from top things to do in Florence, what to eat in Florence, where to stay in Florence, and much, much more. And throughout the video, I will share with you lots of travel tips, so by the end of this video, you will have the most perfect Florence itinerary. Now, before we begin, please remember to smack that like button. And if you're new to my channel and my vibe, and the vibe of this channel resonates with you, I invite you to subscribe. All right, fabulous people, let's go explore Florence. Every corner of Florence is full of things to see, explore, and admire. If this is your first time in Florence, get ready for a walk with plenty of stops to appreciate masterpieces that for centuries amazed millions of visitors from around the world. And our Florence guide begins in the heart of Renaissance Florence, the splendid Piazza del Duomo, home to the imposing Cathedral of Santa Maria del Fiore. This 15th century marvel is the third largest church in Europe. Imagine its construction started in 1296 and was only completed in 1436, when the huge dome by architect Filippo Brunelleschi was finally finished. Of course, we cannot visit Florence without climbing up to the very top of the dome and enjoying some of the best views of the city. But first, a climb of 436 stairs awaits without a possibility of taking an elevator. Fabulous people, if you want to burn a lot of calories so you can eat all the Florentine cake, all the gelato you want, come here. This is the place to be. Climbing the dome is done in two phases. The first set of wide stairs leads to the circular walkway from where you can enjoy the close-up view of the breathtaking Last Judgment, the largest painted surface in frescoes in the world. If you ask me, Anastasia, is this worth it? Let me tell you, fabulous people, totally worth it. Totally worth it. Let's go. The second flights of stairs are steeper, windier, and more narrow, especially as you get closer to the top. But by that point, everyone is too excited and fully determined to make it to the very top. We're almost there, fabulous people. Almost there. Please keep in mind that if you decide to climb up to the top of the dome, you need to get the Brunelleschi Pass, which you can purchase on the official website and choose the time slot and date for your visit. The cost of the pass is 30 euros and in addition to the dome, it gives you access to all the monuments of the complex. One piece of information you might find useful is that the entrance to the cathedral where I am right now is free. Now you have to pay for the entrance to Duomo and there are two different entrances. So if you go to Duomo, you cannot then go see the cathedral. You have to exit the Duomo and then enter the cathedral from the other side. And before you leave this part of the city, make sure not to miss Ghiberti's golden doors that Michelangelo himself called the gates of paradise. These stunning doors took 27 years to complete and to this day they are considered one of the greatest masterpieces from the Renaissance. After all the walking and climbing, I was ready to enjoy some delicious Florence food, so I went to one of the local hidden gems that I'm going to introduce you to. Todo Mondo, a cozy bookstore cafe located in Via dei Fossi. If you're looking for peace and quiet away from tourist crowds, this is a perfect lunch spot for you. The selection of books here is simply amazing. Even if you don't speak Italian, it's inspiring to just look at the beautiful covers. The food at Todo Mondo is simple but really good and the menu changes according to the season. The place is also interesting for people watching, as a lot of Italian intellectuals love to lunch and work here. 
Now, if you don't have a lot of time between floor and sightseeing, I recommend heading for lunch to the Mercato Centrale. If you're looking for one of the best places in Florence for lunch, this Mercato is one of my absolute favorite. I mean, guys, look at this abundance of Italian meats. And of course, throughout the market, there are many different stations where you can try different types of food. Here, you'll be able to taste Tuscan specialties like porchetta, trippa, or enjoy an abundant spread of traditional Italian meats and cheeses with a glass of Tuscan wine, of course. This will definitely fuel you up for more adventures. Even if you just have one day in Florence, you certainly cannot skip the Accademia Gallery to admire one of Michelangelo's most famous sculptures, the Statue of David. Trust me, seeing it in person is nothing like seeing it in pictures. The first thing that strikes you is its size. The statue is sculpted from one solid block of white Carrera marble and is over 14 feet tall. Michelangelo was only 26 when he was commissioned by the Cathedral Works Committee and he worked tirelessly on it in secret for over three years. The sculpture was supposed to be one of the grand statues to decorate the cupola of Florence Duomo, but when he presented the finished piece, the committee unanimously agreed that it was too magnificent and positioned it in city's main square and later moved to the Accademia, where we can all admire it today. One quick travel hack for Italy that I have for you. If you want to avoid long lines, huge crowds, making reservations for restaurants months in advance, and paying double or sometimes even triple for airfare or hotels, one of the best times to visit Italy or Florence in particular is during the first two weeks of January. Trust me on that one, fabulous. And of course, if you want to save countless hours on planning, researching, booking everything for your trip to Italy, then I welcome you you to check out the concierge service of my travel agency where every single thing including accommodations transportation sites tours tickets every single thing will be booked for you so once you arrive to italy you have nothing else to do but to enjoy la dolce vita and of course this florence italy vlog cannot be completed without visiting one of the most famous museums in the world uffizi gallery if you are just starting to plan your trip to Florence, it should definitely be on top of your list of things to do in Florence. Located in the very heart of the city, it hosts works of art by the great Italian artists such as Michelangelo, Leonardo da Vinci, Raffaello and my personal favorite Botticelli. The main part of the collection was left by the Medici family to the state of Tuscany and contains masterpieces from all centuries, with the majority belonging to the Renaissance period. After all the sightseeing, one of the best ways to relax and set your mood for the evening is to go for a walk through Ponte Vecchio, the most famous and oldest bridge in Florence, Italy. Designed by Taddeo Gaddi, a student of Giotto, and finished in 1345, this is a perfect place to do window shopping at the numerous jewelry stores and enjoy the golden hour. Now, when it comes to where to stay in Florence, you will find plenty of options throughout the city. But if you're in love with stunning hotels and looking for a truly unforgettable stay, then I would strongly recommend Four Seasons Hotel, where the concept of beauty and customer service will surpass every level of expectation you have for a luxury hotel. Located within the city's largest private garden, this historic 15th century palace breathes renaissance at every corner, from the statues and frescoes to the original works of art and decorations. With the most attentive staff, first-class gastronomic experience, elegant rooms with vaulted ceilings and the most comfortable beds, Four Seasons never misses, not once. Talking about comfortable beds, after a long day of exploring, I managed to find time for a power nap right before dinner. And as you can tell, it was epic. One very important thing to remember if you plan on doing Italy travel is that 
every single region in Italy is going to have its own traditional food. So I strongly recommend to not order pasta carbonara in Amalfi Coast or Florentine steak in Rome, but where you should definitely try Florentine steak is Florence. And you and I are going to one of the best places for Florentine steak, which is Four Seasons. The reason why Four Seasons Hotel is one of the best places for steak in Florence is because they use Chianina o Fracassi del Casentino meat, which is considered one of the absolute best and healthiest on the market. It is cooked in a Jasper charcoal oven, which has become a cult among chefs all over the world. Once you order, it will take about 30 minutes for your steak to be prepared. So, while you're waiting to begin this one-of-a-kind gastronomic experience, you can enjoy a glass of Franciacorta. Your steak will be served with beans and potatoes, which, by the way, were some of the best I've ever had. The stunning ambiance, Tuscan food, attentive service, and a wonderful company will definitely put you in a mood to live your best moments in Florence. My only wish is that I could do this all over again tomorrow. All right, fabulous people, thank you so much for watching this Florence travel guide. I truly hope that you found it useful and beneficial. And before you go and start packing for Florence, please remember to smack that like button. And if you're new to my channel and my vibe and the vibe of this channel resonates with you, I invite you to subscribe and I truly hope to see you all in my next video.